welcome to English for You. I'm Kat, and I'm Rainbow. And today we're talking about something about a short story or a fable. Do you know any fables? Ooh, the really famous one, the tortoise and the hare. Yeah, that's one that almost everybody knows, I think. And what is the meaning of that one? So the hare or the rabbit runs really quickly,、uh -huh. and the turtle's usually really slow. But in this story, sometimes a person that's slow maybe would win the race because maybe he's more careful、uh -huh. or not as rushed. Right, and the rabbit keeps getting lazy, right, and he keeps relaxing even though he probably shouldn't. That kind of thing. So fables and stories like that are like stories that can teach us something. Right. So I think today we have an interesting one because. Maybe it's not teaching us something quite so directly, but it's still a really interesting story that you can talk about a lot. So let's find out what we are seeing here. Reading. The lady or the tiger. Once upon a time, there was a king who constantly had wonderful new ideas. As he was king, nobody, not even his beautiful, hot-blooded daughter, could prevent him from trying them out. One of these ideas was a new but also unusual way to hold trials, an arena. If a man was said to have committed a crime, he would be sent to the arena. There, he would see two identical doors, behind which were two cells. In one of them was a hungry tiger. In the other was a woman whom he would have to marry on the spot. As the audience watched, the man would choose a door. He would either be eaten by the tiger, or he would marry the lady, whether he wanted to or not. The king loved this system, as he thought it was perfectly fair and impossible to cheat. The citizens of his kingdom enjoyed the excitement of seeing what would happen to the accused. All was well until the king discovered that the princess had fallen in love. All right. So we start with the article here. The first sentence says, "Once upon a time, there was a king who constantly had wonderful new ideas."、Ooh. So we start off with the transition phrase "once upon a time." So this is a phrase used for the beginning, like a long, long time ago, or "once upon a time there was a princess." So basically, it means a long time in the past. So I have a sentence for you: "Once upon a time." The princess lived in the castle.、Mm -hmm. So this is usually for stories that are kind of older and that kind of thing. Okay, and we also see、um, a interesting adverb in this. Um, first sentence, which is constantly. So constantly means you're doing something continuously over a period of time, and it's always happening or continually happening, maybe regular or persistent. So it's something that is always going on. So this king is constantly doing something, right? Yeah. Yeah. So an example sentence would be: Robin was unhappy because Sarah constantly questioned him. All right. So constantly is an adverb. Now, in math or science, we can also say something is a constant term. In this case, the word constant is an adjective. So a constant term or a constant variable is just something that doesn't really change in the equation or the experiment. So we use it as a standard of measure. So constantly means persistently, continuously, and constant is something、mm -hmm. that doesn't change. Yeah, it doesn't change. It keeps going. So going out with this article. We're talking about a king. As he was king, nobody, not even his beautiful, hot-blooded daughter,、mm. could prevent him from trying them out. Them being those new ideas. So here we're talking about a word, prevent. Prevent is a verb,、it、means stop something from happening or stop somebody from doing something. It comes from two words from Latin: pre, which means before, and vent from venire, which means come. So it means come before. Come before something happens. So the daughter wants to come before her father and prevent him from trying his wild ideas. So I wonder what kind of wild ideas he's got. Well, anyway, here's an example from Prevent. The couple has an interesting way to prevent fights from happening. 
They only complain if the issue will matter in ten years. Oh, that's a good strategy. That is, I think so too. That's、yeah. like there's nothing to complain about then、mm-hmm. most of the time. Yeah. All right. So the next sentence of the article: One of these ideas was a new but also unusual way to hold trials. An arena. Oh, interesting. All right, so we have the word arena. Now, arena is a very large area in a Roman amphitheater. Now, amphitheater is a long word. It's an open air venue or a theater used for fighting. So you can see this round circle, and it goes down in the middle, and there's people or bulls fighting, and people watch. So the key feature of an arena is that the event space is the lowest point, so it allows everybody to see what's going on. Arenas are usually designed to fit large numbers of audiences, and today we also have stadiums, football, or for soccer. So that's what an arena is. Okay, so we're talking about the king would like to do something with an arena. So he must have a really big place for people to watch these fights happen. Now, what does he want to do with it? The article says, if a man was said to have committed a crime, he would be sent to the arena. <gasps> okay, so a man who's committed a crime. What does this verb commit? Commit is a way to say do something, but usually the thing you've done or committed is bad in some way. You can do things like commit a crime, commit an offense against somebody, which means like hurt their feelings. Commit blasphemy, which means you speak out against the church and offend the people in the church. Commit murder. Murder, which is killing somebody. Other meanings for commit can be like commit to. This one is not a bad one. It means to promise to do something. Like I commit to my partner means I, you know, marry them and promise to always be with them. Or commit to doing this project. You promise to do something well. So, but here we're talking about the bad meaning without the to. So committing a crime. So the town decided that the woman had committed a sin by speaking out against the church. That's Ooh, an example of which was commit. blasphemy. Blasphemy, yeah. Ooh, that's another hard word.、Mm-hmm. Okay, so next sentence is there. He would see two identical doors. Behind which were two cells.、Hmm. All right, so we have an adjective here. The doors are identical. So identical means exactly the same, very very similar. So usually when we talk about identical, we can say identical twins. These are twins who come from the same egg, so they look the same. Now we also have other kinds of twins、um, which are not from the identical cells, so they might not look exactly the same. So I can say. You know, I've got three identical blue suits because I need one every day. So I just rotate them and wear the same one. Or we can say the rooms were virtually identical. They're exactly the same. They look the same. You can't tell which is which. Or we can say the test is identical to the one from last year, so、ah. it's exactly the same questions, exactly the same answers, which would be good.、Uh, it might be good, but it might make it easy to cheat too. True. True.、Mm, okay, so we're talking about two identical doors with two cells behind them. I guess the cells probably are identical too. In one of the cells, in one of them was a hungry tiger. In the other was a woman whom he would have to marry on the spot. Oh my god! Wow, a tiger and a woman. So this is actually what the name of the article is: a lady and the tiger. So let's find out what are we talking about with this,、uh, you know, on the spot. Okay, so we're talking about this phrase here, on the spot. If the man has to marry the woman on the spot, he has to do it right there, right away. If you put somebody on the spot, it means you're asking them to do something challenging or answer a hard question, and they have to do it right away. A similar phrase here might be like on the dot, on the spot, on the dot. But on the dot means exactly. So you're usually talking about it with time, like two o'clock on the dot, exactly two o'clock. However, for this man to choose the lady on the spot, if he chooses the lady, he has to marry her in front of everyone. Okay. All right, so we're moving on to our next sentence.、Mm-hmm. As the audience watched, the man would choose a door. Wow! All right, so we have the audience. Audience is people who are watching something. So in this case, there's a big theater, there's a big stadium or arena, and people are seeing what's going on. Now, usually when we have audience, we have people who listen to a play, a film. 
somebody speaking or something like that. So we, when we talk about the number of people in an audience, we can say an audience of number. So we can say this theater holds an audience of 300 or, you know, you're playing for an audience of one and one else is watching. Maybe that one person really likes your music though. That's true. <laughs> and that's very important too. The audience is really important to any performance. I have a sentence for you. The audience's response is crucial to every magician. Mm -hmm. That's true. Okay, so back to the man, the tiger and the lady. When he chooses a door, he would either be eaten by the tiger or he would marry the lady whether he wanted to or not. Oh, that's terrible. Hmm. That could be kind of bad, especially if maybe if he has somebody else that he likes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so how about this whether or not, whether he wanted to or not. This grammar point talks about a choice, or actually it talks about not having a choice. Whether is one of those interesting WH question words. With or not, it shows if if A happens or if A doesn't happen, the result will be the same. If he wants to marry the lady, if he doesn't, he has to marry her either way. We can also put it like whether A or not, or whether or not A, either one. So whether he wants to or not, or whether or not he wants to, either is okay. I have another example for you. Whether or not she studied hard, Abby never got better than a B on her English exams. Oh no. Oh, poor, poor girl. Yeah. Can also use whether like with whether A or B. Whether you go by bus or by train, it's easy to get to the city. So either way, this, the result is the same. Okay, so the next part of the story, the king loved this system as he thought it was perfectly fair and impossible to cheat. I don't know about fair, but maybe impossible to cheat is right. All right, so let's talk about the adjective impossible. Impossible, I am, means not, possible, okay? So impossible is not able to occur or exist or be done. So if we say something is impossible, it means it can't happen, it can't be achieved. For example, it was impossible to sleep because of the noise, it was so noisy. Now, when we say a situation is impossible, that means it's very difficult to deal with or solve we can say, it's an impossible situation. She has to leave him because he's being really mean to her, but she can't bear losing her children, so she doesn't know what to choose. It's an impossible situation. We can also use impossible to describe a person. An impossible person behaves very badly and is extremely difficult to deal with. So we could say, I had to leave the job because my boss was impossible. Okay, so, so far we've learned that you have this king and he has this hot-blooded daughter and hot-blooded I guess means that she's got a very strong heart and a strong mind and she wants to do whatever she wants. So anyway, but she still can't prevent her dad from doing this crazy idea, which is that he will take the criminals to an arena and they have two doors they have to choose between and what? And then you're supposed to marry somebody, whether or not you like it? What was the other option? Or get eaten by a tiger. Oh my goodness. So neither one is that great. But what do the other people think about it? Well, turns out the citizens of his kingdom enjoyed the excitement of seeing what would happen to the accused. Sounds like they're a little bit interested in, you know, maybe seeing them get hurt or maybe seeing them get embarrassed. Yeah. Or being forced to do something they don't want to do. They right. They think it's fun. Yeah, I mean, yeah, apparently people used to think this way a lot. <laughs> mm. But what about this noun, the accused? The accused. And we don't have anything after the accused. It just sounds kind of like using a verb with no object. But it's actually a common way to talk. The accused is a phrase we use to talk about a person who's been charged with a crime. It's a way to refer to them without calling them by their name. So if the guy's name is Bob, you don't have to call him Bob, you just call him the accused. We can also do this with other the and past participle or the adjective, like the deceased is what we call dead people, especially at their funerals. The privileged is people who have a lot of power or a lot of money. We call them the 
privileged as a whole group of people. Or another group of people that we refer to a lot is the elderly, which is old people. Like instead of saying like all those old people over there, you say the elderly need some care. So here's another couple of exa examples for you. The accused must go to court and stand trial. Then the jury will decide if he's guilty or not. And one more with elderly. The elderly make up a big percentage of Taiwan's current population. That's what that means is there's a lot of elderly. So when we say the accused or the elderly or deceased, it's kind of a more polite way of saying right. um, old people or like dead people because that exactly. sounds like a little bit harsh. Yeah, if you say dead people, it sounds really you're dead. Yeah, exactly. It's not it's not very polite. It's kind of rude. Yeah. So if you say the, the deceased, the accused, all that sort of thing. Those are all nouns. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next sentence. All was well until the king discovered that the princess had fallen in love. <gasps> what does that fall mean to fall in love. Okay, so this is a phrase that is talking about beginning to experience feelings of love towards somebody. So they say fall in love because it's kind of like you're falling into something. You're like oh, suddenly I don't know what to do. Ah. I feel like I, I like my heart is beating <laughs> or I'm very nervous. So when you fall in love, it means you're very suddenly and powerfully attracted to somebody and you might not have been able to predict those feelings. Mm -hmm. So, or you, for example, you can say, um, I dream of traveling to Paris someday and falling in love. Okay, with a beautiful Ooh. French man or woman, whatever yeah, you prefer. Yeah, beautiful French person. Beautiful <laughs> French person and falling in love, living happily ever after. These phrases often appear in um, fairy tales. Hmm. So you think there's a difference between fall in love and love somebody? Oh, hmm. so falling in love and being in love and loving might be a little bit different. Yeah. So I think falling is like a sudden action of not being able to control what happens very suddenly. Right. But when we say be in love, I think mm. to me it sounds like it's more of um, continuing. Continuing? Yeah, yeah. And like you fell in love, now you are in love. Yes, yeah. yes, because you can fall in love and then fall out of love. Uh oh. Oh, so what does that mean? So that means you were in love and then you were not because there was a fight or something happened yeah, or, or people maybe made you just upset. Maybe it just happened. I don't know. Some people fall out of love for no reason. Yeah, Sorry. and then th there's another one that's interesting though. Hmm. I think you can love somebody without falling in love or being in love with them. I think so too. What does that mean? You can love somebody and it doesn't have to be love, love, kiss, kiss, hug, hug. It doesn't have to be romantic love. Yeah. It could be like loving your father and mother. Or loving, siblings. Yeah, loving your friends. You might say to your friends, I love you so much, but you don't want to be their boyfriend or girlfriend. Yes. Yeah. So knowing that, I guess we are going to go on with the story in day two, but let's find out what our For You chat question is today. For You chat! All right, so we are here for our day one For You chat question, and it is an interesting one. What do you think is the best way to deal with someone who has committed a crime? What do you Ooh. think? That's a really hard question, actually. So there are a couple of um, different parties about this issue. Mm -hmm. Some people believe in the death penalty, which means you kill somebody for doing something really bad. Yeah. I personally think that that is really scary because one, we don't know for sure whether that person has committed a crime or not. Sometimes mm -hmm. law can be a little bit confusing regarding the truth. True. So we don't know. And the second one is you can never come back from killing somebody. Exactly. And the other way probably to deal with a crime is to put them in jail, maybe for a long period of time. What do you think about that? Do you think that helps people? I think it depends on the crime. There are lots of different kinds of crimes. Some, you know, some hurt people, some don't. Some are like stealing things and some are, you know, killing people. It's Ooh. very, very different. True. So I think that you have to deal with it on one by one basis. True. Like it, you have to think about 
how bad was it, and then decide what to do because of that. Yeah, and sometimes、yeah. maybe you want to think about how the other person responds. Maybe they committed a crime because they didn't know something,、mm-hmm. okay, or they had some kind of illness, or、right. there's different factors to consider. So this is a really hard question. Yes, and that's why it takes so long to deal with. You know, if somebody commits a crime, what do you do with them? Mm-hmm. So you guys can discuss about that. I'm sure you could probably talk about it for hours with your friends or your classmates. So we're gonna go for now, and we will see you in day two. The lady or the tiger. Once upon a time, there was a king who constantly had wonderful new ideas. As he was king, nobody. Not even his beautiful, hot-blooded daughter could prevent him from trying them out. One of these ideas was a new but also unusual way to hold trials, an arena. If a man was said to have committed a crime, he would be sent to the arena. There, he would see two identical doors, behind which were two cells. In one of them was a hungry tiger. In the other was a woman whom he would have to marry on the spot. As the audience watched, the man would choose a door. He would either be eaten by the tiger, or he would marry the lady, whether he wanted to or not. The king loved this system, as he thought it was perfectly fair and impossible to cheat. The citizens of his kingdom enjoyed the excitement of seeing what would happen to the accused. All was well until the king discovered that the princess had fallen in love. Vocabulary review. Constantly, the English language is constantly changing. New words are appearing all the time. Prevent. John's leg injury prevented him from running in the race. Commit. Everyone was happy when the person who committed the murder was captured. Audience. The audience all stood up and cheered when the singer finished singing. Impossible. It is impossible for most humans to hold their breath underwater for more than a couple of minutes. The accused. All of the accused in this bank robbery case will appear in court tomorrow. The next program is by Huayong Cultural Media. 活用空中美语杂志，请洽询全国各大书店。如欲索取视听教材，请来电零二二三六四四零零零零二二三六四四零零零，或上网查询，网址是 triple w dot english 四 u dot net triple w dot english 四 u dot net。